if I tweet something out or if people start bashing what I'm saying, it usually means I should actually up my allocation because I'm going to be right and make more money. Because I think so many people have got into yep. their heads that 20K is the bottom. That's it. Yep. But somehow Bitcoin has to flush out almost everybody. Like there has to be a flush out, uh, a shakeout of the weak hands. Panic people. I think a lot of people will get panicked when they see Bitcoin below 20K and think, oh, wait a second. I thought 20K was the bottom here. Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? The way you know a bottom is in or getting close is when people are too scared to buy in. Yeah. So 100% agree. There's a lot of people waiting to buy at 20, so they're going to flush it through 20. They'll push it down just enough to make those people stop out and exit. All right, guys, so welcome to this video here, uh, the interview session with trader and analyst Gareth Soloway of InTheMoneyStocks.com. In case you don't know, Gareth, in fact, has been a trader and analyst, uh, in, for, in fact, chief market strategist of InTheMoneyStocks.com since 2007. He's been a trader uh, for nearly 20 years. And I actually want to ask this question uh, again from Gareth, because we mentioned it uh, earlier. Um, but I mean, you said, Gareth, by the way, how are you doing? Uh, you, you just recently moved from New York, I think you said, to Florida. And I guess my question is, it must have been hell trying to move all those, and I guess reinstalling all those monitors behind you. Because <laughs> huh. my, my biggest fear, I gotta tell you, my biggest fear is when I move to a different location, what am I gonna do with all these screens behind me? <laughs> because they're heavy and difficult to reinstall or reassemble again. But how, so, how did you do it? <laughs> so I just when I just moved here, um, so I have one of those big cars now because I got two kids. So so I was able to put the back seats down, and I literally did not detach these screens. So it's there are four screens on each thing, and I literally was able to kind of close them. And then I, it was so heavy too, but I just I put them in the car as is. And then my biggest fear, like you, is like, well, how do I reattach every cord? Like I mean. So you're right. It is a major pain in the butt. And the, and the moral of the story is just don't move a lot. <laughs> yeah, don't move a lot. Yeah, that's true. Gareth, let's talk about obviously the questions everybody, I mean, the subject that everybody's talking about right now, oh, yeah. uh, which is the Bitcoin and crypto drop. Although perhaps by the time people are watching this video, there may be a different news story. I don't know, but let, hopefully it'll be uh, similar to what we're talking about here right now. I was, I was actually watching an interview with you with another person. I won't mention his name, but he wasn't letting you talk. I was like, hey, let Gareth talk, man. <laughs> and I don't want to make the same mistake because I know people say, oh. let Gareth. You made a brilliant call uh, when I think when Bitcoin was at 60K or 69K, you were expecting it to drop to 20K. And you got, you got a lot of heat. You got a lot of backlash, as I've done myself in the past whenever I've gone against the crowd. And one thing, one thing we both have in common is we're both contrarians. And so we, we both get trashed in, in social yeah. media, obviously. So my first question is, firstly, what was it like to get that backlash and reaction? You know, you, it must have been hard to, to get that kind of heat. My second question also, if you can answer is, what made you at, at the level, I think Bitcoin was 60K, what made you think, okay, you know what, now we're due for a drop this 20K? What was going on in your head? Yeah, so so yeah, you're right about the backlash. I mean, I think I think in, our, in the careers we take on when we kind of get in front of people, that's just the nature of it, especially with social media today. But weirdly enough, that actually reinforces my position. I joke with some of my fellow traders yeah. that if I tweet something out or if people start bashing what I'm saying, it usually means I should actually up my allocation because I'm going to be right and make more money. Um, it's just the nature of the crowd, right? So so when, mm -hmm. when everyone is bullish, it's just the nature that that's usually the topping out point or close to it. Now, with Bitcoin, there were some signals, right? So when it was topping out in, in October, November uh, at 65, 69,000, you had the same things going on that were occurring in 2017, namely that we had the futures ETF launch in, in October. Um, in 2017, the, the first, the futures actually launched. So it was the futures launch marked the high in 2017, the futures ETF marked the high in 2021. Yeah. In addition, the euphoria was so palpable. I mean, like, like you could not go anywhere without the bagel guy, the pizza man. And, and I mean, I've always <laughs> been taught that when those people are saying, Hey, I'm, I'm buying yeah. Bitcoin. It's probably, you're probably late to the party. And think about this, now, this, this thought process. If you have 10 participants in a market and the pizza man and stuff is, are like the, the last ones. So all the smart money is already in. And finally the pizza man joins that crowd. Who's left to buy. 
right? Eventually you run out of buyers. The other things that were kind of crazy, and this didn't come till February, but I lived through the dot-com era, right? So that was the beginning of my trading career. The chart on Amazon from the dot-com was picture perfect, almost identical to what Bitcoin was forming. So I was like, I was like, all right, wait. So these altcoins are going up thousands of percentages, just like the dot-com bubble happened with the dot-coms back then. A lot of them make no sense. They're, I mean, when you have Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, which are jokes, <laughs> yeah. and they're valued at $50 billion, there's some yeah. disconnect going on here. And those are the signals that kind of harped as well. And then just some other stuff. So like some cool stats. Um, at the height in November, the crypto market, I think, was $3.1 trillion. The height of of the dot com era was like 2.9 trillion, so very similar. And then in 2000, the Super Bowl was talked about as being the dot com Super Bowl because there were so many dot com commercials. And then this past Super Bowl in February was like the crypto Super Bowl because there were so many Super Bowl commercials. So, so I mean, that was just a lot of it right there where you could, I was starting to recognize the over euphoric nature and it just wasn't making sense anymore. It was like, how are, how are there 10, 20,000 cryptocurrencies? How are they all worth something? There has to be a flush out here. Now you couple that with a double top on the daily chart, even though it pierced, it never confirmed above that. Um, yeah. Stuff like that just got me very, very kind of bearish and I just didn't believe it. I, and again, it's not to say that I wasn't gonna be wrong for a short amount of time. I've been plenty of times been wrong for short amounts of time, but in general, there had to be a washout and we are seeing that now. And by the way, the Fed was kind of perfectly playing into that with once they started to withdraw liquidity from the market, it just couldn't sustain what we were seeing there. Yeah, the Super Bowl, uh, I mean, I remember there were so many, you're right, about the crypto commercials and uh, Matt Damon got a lot of heat as well because Matt yes. Damon, the actor, <laughs> famously in his, in his um, advert, he says, uh, only the brave. Fortune favors the brave. Yeah, you have to be you have to be brave, right? And that's such bad advice. No, no, no. That's that's not that's not what you should be telling people. <laughs> right, that's right. And it's almost like that emotional thing, right? I mean, he's like yeah. telling you, you gotta step, you like you gotta fight it. And and the bottom line is, you and I both know you can't fight markets. Um, the markets are gonna do what yeah. they want. You know, they certainly did here. So so you're right, man. I mean, both we've taken lots of you know slack and 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 hits, but but it's it's the it's the logic, and I think you would agree with this, is being able to step back and just look at something objectively. And that's when you look at charts objectively and you look at situations like what was going on in crypto, it enabled you to see that something wasn't right here. And it didn't make sense that all these altcoins, you know, tens of, I mean, I think there's like 20 or there was 20, I don't know how many are left. How are they all gonna be going up forever and ever? You had to see that kind of Darwinian washout. Can you see my chart? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I want to go back to your um, thesis of whether you still hold 12K as a level or not, um, or uh, or maybe you still hold on to that. Go on. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So so as you as you guys know, like yeah, back last October, November, I was I was all about. I think we're going to go back to 20K, and then as we've gotten closer to that, I've done more analysis, and I said, all right, well now my high end is 20K, so that like is a best case scenario. I actually think we're going to go lower. In fact, we're at 20,600 right now. I think overnight we got close to 20,000 on the button. But basically the mm -hmm. thought process behind the 12,000 target, there's a couple things. One's one something I call call a measured move. And and basically what you end up doing here is you take the initial move down, then you had this consolidation pattern, right? And then you so you take that distance from here to here. And then you basically do an extension of that same thing and you basically arrive right around 12,000 right here, right? Um, I thought it was interesting that, you know, you also, that also coincides kind of with this little pivot area right here, which is also gonna be a major support. We can see right here, it was also a major support. And then the other thing that kind of stuck in the back of my mind is that every bear winter, as people call it in crypto, you get basically a Bitcoin that declines 80 to 85%. Well, if you take 80 to 85% from 69,000, you basically get right around 12,000. So, so it's not to say that targets can't adjust. They always can. I mean, I think you'd agree that with every candle on a candlestick chart, things may change a little bit. But to me, that 12,000 sticks out, especially that we're so close to 20 now. And the stock market is, to me, is not even close. I mean, we haven't even gone back to, the high pre-COVID yet of where of where we were in the NASDAQ or the S&P. 
So to me, it's got to go below 20 at this point. Now, it may be three months from now, who knows, but it's got to go lower. And so I'm kind of in that range of saying, okay, well, now at least 12,000. Could it go to five? It could. If there's one thing I've learned in trading, <laughs> it's that markets always go further than you think in both directions. Yeah. And I actually think you're right about the sub 20K. I mean, uh, I don't think it has gone below 20K at the moment as, I'm, as we're making this video. The low of today is what, uh, Gareth? Is uh, 20... looks, like, looks like 20,079. Ah, okay. Came very close. I actually think you're right. It makes sense for it to go to 20 below 20K. I have to be honest. I find it difficult to conceive that Bitcoin's going to 12K. You could be right. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying you're wrong. Um, as a worst case scenario, yeah, I can see that. Um, but I do think you're right about it going below 20K because it needs to, because I think so many people have got into yep. their heads that 20K is the bottom, that's it. Yep. That it, somehow Bitcoin has to flush out almost everybody. Like yep. there has to be a flush out, uh, a shake out of the weak hands, panic people. I think a lot of people will get panicked when they see Bitcoin below 20K and think, oh, wait a second. I thought 20K was the bottom here. Whoa, whoa, what's going on here? Yep. So I think, do you think that psychology, that sort of, Flushing out needs to happen at some point. Absolutely, you're 100% right. So, so think about this. There's so many average investors that are like, okay, well, the 2017 high, that's worst case my bottom, you know, and, and I'm gonna put my stop right there, right? So we know stops get run, like I, we talked about earlier, the, the idea is that, you know, if everyone psychologically puts their level there. And then I've seen so many people say, all right, now, you know, and this is over the last month, 20,000 is where we're headed, so I'm going to buy there. And by the way, when, when we were at like 60,000, even 50 and 40, and I was saying 20, people were like, I'm going to sell my kidney to buy Bitcoin at 20. That would be amazing, right? But now, like, yeah. now what ends up happening is when you get to these levels, and I said it back then, people, the way you know a bottom is in or getting close is when people are too scared to buy in. Yeah. So. 100% agree. There's a lot of people waiting to buy at 20, so they're going to flush it through 20. They'll push it down just enough to make those people stop out and exit, yeah. and then that'll be the bottom. And like you said, like you're so right that I don't know if it's going to go to 12. Maybe it goes to 15, maybe 18, maybe 19, maybe 10. Don't try to, even as a technical trader, I don't try to pick exact bottoms. What I do is yes. like basically when we, when we pierce 20, I'm going to put out like one fifth of the amount I want to buy of Bitcoin. And then probably every 2,000 or 2,500 or 3,000, I'll put out another order below, below, below. And then this way, you know, if, if 19 is as low as we go, all right, I got some skin in the game. If we go down to 10, I've got a nice, a nice chunk of skin in the game, but at least I have exposure. And, and ultimately, my dollar cost averaging will behave itself, hopefully. So. And by the way, another signal, you mentioned uh, one signal is when people are scared to buy. I'll give you another signal. It's when people like you and I get trashed for if, if any one of us has a slightly bullish opinion, Yo. even slightly of a bullish opinion, we'll get demolished in on social media saying these guys have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like, and just just like at the highs, like that, and that's such a great point. Is like at the highs you get trashed, and then when when you go bullish at the lows. By the way, people, when we were when we, I, I got named on Twitter, right? They called me Bareth yeah. Soloway. Because you know Bareth Gareth, my my name, but Bareth because I was a bear on Bitcoin. Like, oh, I see, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like silly, but but my point is that, and I always used to say to people is that I'm not like I'm not a bear, I'm not a perma bear. I'm a trader. I'm an investor. Like, there's yeah. always going to be a level. I I think something's a short or it's coming down, and there's always going to be a level where I get bullish. That's just a trader's mentality. And so it's not like I'm yeah. always a bear. I'm going to be a bull at the, at the right price. It just has to go to those right prices. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I have another question for you, which is slightly different. I mean, everybody's talking about downside expectations, but here's the question I want to ask you here, because we've got this chart on the screen right now, Bitcoin. Now, assuming the price does not change too wildly between now and when this video goes live, <laughs> but, and we know that Bitcoin is obviously uh, going to do something to uh, make whatever we say now irrelevant. But but now that this chart is here, I want to ask you a question. What needs to happen for you? Let's say price manages to hold near where we're at right now, near 20K approximately, or maybe slightly below 20K. But what needs to happen for you on the chart of Bitcoin to say, ah, okay, we're getting now closer to a bottom. Putting aside the sentiment, 
talking more about price action perspective or, or resistance perspective, where do yeah. you see resistance right now? So, so I think for me, it's going to be when we start breaking above key levels. So, so like for instance, yeah. if we get a bounce here, right, which which very possibly we could off twenty before it breaks even, or maybe it quickly breaks and then bounces. A lot of people, once it bounces significantly, will say, okay, we now have a low, this is the new bull market, you'll hear all the rigmarole, right? But really, in essence, you have this defined level here at 30, which is obviously, that is now major resistance, because we obviously hit it over here, and then look at the consolidation you got there before the breakdown. So if we go back there, yeah. that might just be a classic bear market retrace. The other thing that I'm noticing is this downsloping trend line connecting the all-time high with the secondary high here, this trend line within a month yeah. or two, is going to start to be right in this range. And so we would, if, yeah. if, if I were to start to go bullish and really believe the bear market is over, I would have to see price starting to trade above this area. And then I would start to say, okay, maybe we're in a new bull cycle at that point. But right now, I mean, again, it has to prove itself before I'm willing to change that, especially with inflation causing the Fed to overreact and all this stuff like this. You got to believe that that there's more downside, especially because I, I'm a true believer that the equity markets are very intertwined in crypto because it's yeah. the deleveraging, right? So if the NASDAQ still has another 10 or 20% to go down, even on a bounce on Bitcoin, if, if the NASDAQ is still heading lower, I got to believe that that Bitcoin has more downside. And actually, if we can just draw that chart bit to the left, yep. we can see that downward trend line, sloping trend line, we can see that it's also, yeah, because a lot of people don't get this. They think that when you say that trend line, they think that they think that it has to go massively. No, that trend line is going to keep sloping down with time. Right. So if you yeah. just and basically if point, you get a, price, a one yeah. month bounce here, you might hit both of those lines at the same time, which would be epic yeah. resistance. Yes. So, uh, but maybe in a few months' time, um, that's that slope will be lower, and then a break of that could potentially uh, signify maybe a, a break of a downtrend line. Or yeah, so so and, and let me just point yeah. that out. That's a great point. So the way I would view this, let's say we're two, three, four months out from now. And let's say, yeah. um, I'm going to draw this, just kind of do my best here. But, but let's say you break here. So what I would end up doing then is I think once you break this downsloping trend line, you now are potentially entering the bottom phase of the market. So what I would end up doing then is, yes, this is going to be resistance here but I would actually be a buyer on a pullback off of that, as long as you stay above this trend line. And granted, you could come back down, but I think this downsloping trend line is marking your longer term trend from the highs. That's the big one. That's the one you really got to break first, but then understand that you'll get pullbacks off these levels along the way. Yeah, interesting point. Oh, thank you so much indeed, uh, Gareth. That's been uh, really interesting. It's been good talking with you about crypto and Bitcoin. Um, tell us how people can actually find you, because I know that um, you're on Twitter, at Gareth Soloway. I'll put it uh, in the video for, for everyone. And I know your website is inthemoneystocks.com. Make sure, guys, you check it out, inthemoneystocks.com. Um, so tell us a bit more about what you can provide for people. And, uh, yeah, and thank you, you so much. And thank you for having me. It's been a, honestly a, sure. a wonderful conversation. Um, I love talking with other people that, you know, are chart readers and like myself. So so Twitter's the easiest way. Um, I tweet usually a couple times a day, really interesting kind of chart setups, both on stocks as well as cryptocurrencies or just overall macro views. And then also, um, like you mentioned, in the money stocks .com, uh, there I have a, a service called Verified Investing Alerts where I put out stock trades, ETFs. Um, as well as a daily video. And then my crypto service I launched last November called verifiedinvestingcrypto.com. And that's just purely crypto. So daily videos of crypto, um, technical analysis, as well as trades in crypto as well. Thank you very much, Gareth. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah.